question. Uh, again, thank you guys for joining me here today uh, as we, we are heading into the first day of Passover. Uh, I want to Today, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, maybe 15 minutes, uh, because this is really going to pretty much, uh, we're going to home in on one section of a, an entire message we did yesterday. And if you haven't seen this message, I want to encourage you uh, to go back on our main websites. You can find this on endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com, or you can go to our YouTube channel and uh, you can look for this message. But we did a message yesterday uh, entitled... Four powerful insights for this Passover season. So again, I want to encourage you. I bookmarked this on our Facebook page. So if you've not seen this, guys, I want to encourage you to go back on there and believe for these four things in your in your family and your walk with God for the next seven days as we enter into the season of Passover. So in this segment, uh, and you guys that are watching this by YouTube and by Facebook, I want to home in on one particular subject, and we're going to look, dig a little bit deeper on this. Uh, and today on this little segment, I want to talk about praying the captives out of Egypt and the rule of Pharaoh. Again, we're going to deal with uh, praying out the captives out of Egypt and out from under the rule of Pharaoh. So what am I talking about? If you go to Exodus chapter 12, you'll discover that the 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 the, the Jews, the Israelites that were they were commanded to uh, they were commanded to do the Passover uh, in which they were given instructions uh, by the Lord to Moses and Aaron to give the people the instructions to put the blood over the doorpost and over the lintels and then also eat the lamb. They were to permit it to stay in the house. And then after the Passover, it was then it was through this process is when they were liberated, watch this, from Egypt, and then they journeyed out of captivity, out of their bondage, unto their journey to the promised land. So we're going to home in on this particular subject, and today I want to deal with targeting lost loved ones. Again, targeting lost loved ones, family members, co-workers, friends, neighbors, whatever the case may be, uh, you and I, every single individual under the sound of my voice via YouTube or by Facebook, we know people that are bound in Egypt and under the rule of Pharaoh. So what does that mean, preacher? This is what it means. Egypt represents sin and captivity and Pharaoh is the stronghold that is keeping them in that captivity. So let's talk about this. Acts chapter 7 is going to be our little bit of a foundation here. Acts chapter 7. And here's what it says. Acts 7, 6 through 7. Then we'll go to Acts uh, 7, 17. But God spoke in this way that his descendants would dwell in a foreign land and that they would bring them into bondage and oppress them for 400 years. And the nation to whom they will be in bondage will be judged, says God. And after that, they shall come out and serve me in this place. Verse 17, but when the time of the promise drew near, this is encouraging, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose who did not know Joseph. This man dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies so that they may not live. At this time, Moses was born. Come on, he was the deliverer. And it was well-pleasing to God. And he was brought up in his father's house for three months. But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him as her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. So, here it is, guys. I want, to, I want to get you this picture here. The children of Israel were in captivity. We know, according to Scripture, for 400 years, they were in bondage. They were, into ca they were in captivity. They were oppressed. They were in depression. Uh, and then, watch this, when the time of the promise drew near, God raised up a deliverer, which was Moses, and led the people out of captivity, out of oppression, and out of bondage, and out of the rule of Pharaoh. Friends, listen to me. 
I don't know how long your loved ones have been in captivity and under the rule of Pharaoh. Come on, they've been in sin. They've been bound and blinded by the enemy. The God of this world has blinded the eyes and the hearts of those lest they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ unless the the glorious light of the gospel should shine into their hearts. So, you know, for me, I had loved ones that I had prayed for once, you know, I got saved in 2000 and some of these did not come. I did not see with my physical eyes, their deliverance and their, uh, and their liberation from their own Egypt and from their own Pharaoh. And sometimes it was five years, seven years later. So again, some of you has been praying for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, but I want you to not grow weary because when the time of the promise draws near and why not now, why not? during this season of Passover on the calendar when 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 Pharaoh let the people go and they were set free during this time of Passover so again I want to recap this I'm going to give you a strategy here today if you would I want to give you a strategy on what and how to pray for these people all right Egypt again represents sin and captivity so Again, this represents oppression, depression, bondage, captivity. Now you say bondage of what? Again, sin, captivity to drugs, alcoholism, pornography, depression. There's people that are bound by prescription drugs. They're bound by witchcraft and sorcery and new age. They're bound by anger. They're bound by bitterness and greed and unforgiveness and fear. And the list goes on, okay? But watch But when the promise drew near, again, it was immediately after the Passover, the children of Israel transitioned from bondage to freedom, from captivity to liberation. So you so. Again, number one, we've got to pray for them. It's essential for you and I. If no one else is praying for them, we are. You are. I am. You, we are the ones who've got to bombard heaven with our prayers and intercession. So how do we pray? I want to show you how you pray. Matthew 12, 28 through 30. See, this is where Pharaoh comes in. We understand Egypt represents sin. It represents that bondage and that oppression that, that these people that are lost are in. But Pharaoh represents the strong man that's keeping them in bondage. So how do we pray against this? Matthew 12, 28 through 30 gives us some insight on this. Listen what Jesus said when he was speaking here. He says, but I cast out demons by the spirit of God and surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or he says, how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he can plunder his house. So again, guys, I want to emphasize to you that are watching by Facebook and by YouTube, we've got to home in on the strong man over our loved one's lives, over our neighbor's lives, over our co-workers or whoever that it is that we're praying for. Who is that Pharaoh in their life? It's the, the root cause, the strong man that's keeping them from salvation. Is it again, is it drugs that's keeping them out of the house of God and, and the salvation with God? Is this, is the Pharaoh in their life pornography is it depression is it prescription pills is it witchcraft is it anger is it unforgiveness and bitterness and greed and fear and malice what is that strong man and you say well I don't know what it is preacher I I really don't know what it is listen ask the Holy Spirit I'm telling you if you'll ask him he'll reveal it to you and when it's revealed to you and when you know what the Pharaoh is and what that strong man is you begin to bomb barred heaven with prayer and with intercession begin the bible says in the book of matthew i believe it's 18 18 whatsoever things you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and whatsoever things we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven the lord gives us the power to loose and bind you can begin to bind up that strong man begin to bind up that oppression bind up that depression bind up that suicide and those those bondages of drugs and alcohol and pornography and dep- and all these things begin to bind them take authority over them the the word of god says behold i given to you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and then we begin to loose we bind and then we loose we begin to loose 
loose the Holy Spirit. We begin to loose them in freedom and in, in liberation. Loose them from the chains in which they're shackled in. Loose them out of the depression and speak joy unspeakable and full of glory over their life. Speak the love of God over them. Declare those things that be not as though they were in Jesus' name. Now listen, I want you, I want to challenge you to do something. I'm going to do this and I'm going to ask that you do this. You know who these people are. I want you to begin to name them by name. If you've got to, get out a, a list and get out a piece of paper. Get uh, get your, uh, your tablet, your phone, whatever the case may be. Make a list of names and begin to call them out before the Lord during this time of Passover. Why? Because you're praying them out of their Egypt. You're praying them out of their captivity. And begin to come on somebody. Bind the strong man over their life. As you begin to name these people by name, I believe with the help of the Holy Spirit and the knowledge you already have over them, you'll begin to the you begin to expose that Pharaoh over the life and begin to come on. You got to speak to the devil and say, "Let my people go." Come on, who I, I'm asking you to believe with me. I've got people that I. And bombard, come on, I'm storming the gates of hell by the power and by the authority of Jesus and commanding Pharaoh, commanding Satan to let the people go and liberate them. Let them go. Free them from captivity. Free them from bondage. Free them from depression. Free them from drug abuse and alcohol abuse and pornography. And to let those people go and be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you again let's recap this i told you i was going to make this real quick here's what we're going to recap we're going to pray again i want you to agree with me matthew 18 19 if any two shall agree in touching any one thing it shall be done by the father which is in heaven Okay, we're going to begin to bombard heaven, begin to intercede and begin to pray on behalf of those under the bondage of Egypt, under sin, captivity and under the rule of Pharaoh. What is Satan binding them with? Write down their names, write down the strongholds, begin to pray in your inner, in your time of devotion and your secret time. Begin to bombard heaven and praying for them, because listen, friend, sometimes in some of you guys in your family, you're the only one that's standing in the gap and making up the hedge and you're praying for them. Ask God to break your heart. Ask God to allow your heart to begin to weep for them that are lost. Begin to break you that you shed tears over them and you begin to intercede. Romans 8 says, when you know not what you ought to pray, the Spirit helps us in our infirmities with groanings that cannot be uttered and we pray according to the will of God. So begin to pray for them, guys, and ask that the Lord would deliver them out of Egypt and under the rule of their Pharaoh. So again, I thank you guys for coming on here today. Uh, now look, we prayed over this on our last session. So we're going to continue to pray. So if, again, I want to encourage you, if you did not catch our last uh, message we did on this, um, again, it's on our Facebook page. We bookmarked it up there. It's on the main website, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. It's called Four Powerful Insights for this Passover season. And, and this is just one of four insights. And I, and I really think I'm going to go over these individually and, and dig a little bit deeper and peel the box a little bit more later. And again, we're going to we're, we're going to get off here in just a second guys but again I want to encourage you to subscribe intimeheadlines.org intimeheadlines.com is our main website again I appreciate all your prayers all your support if you uh, if this ministry blesses you as always I want to encourage you and we'll put up all the links there on our Facebook on our Facebook side on the YouTube side you can see all that information here as you're watching this when this is broadcasted if you'd like to sow into this ministry, please do that. Whatever the Holy Spirit speaks on to your heart. Uh, this is a full-time ministry and we operate by the, the generous support of the viewers just like yourself to do what we're doing today. So we love you guys. God bless.